Damn! If this is what space crime looks like, I should probably get into it. Combat suit sealed and locked. On second thought, you know what? Not worth it. Welcome back one and all to StarCraft 2 Co-op Guide, a video series where I go through every co-op commander in the game in this exact order and go through their abilities, units, mastery, prestige, teaching the do's and don'ts of the commander. And if you're interested on a video of any of the previous commanders in this exact order, down below in the description, there's a playlist where you can find every single commander's respective video. Now back on to the main topic of the video. Crime doesn't pay. I mean, technically it does, but the morals and the risks that are lost in doing the crime is ultimately not worth it. One such of these convicts that is very proud of his achievements is also the commander for this video. How convenient. Tychus Finley, the wild card of the Terrans that used to run with James Raynor in their pirating days. Fast forward many years, James Raynor is a freedom fighter, and Tychus has just been let out of prison for minor crimes due to quote unquote good behavior. Murderer. Pirate. Traitor. They. You go. But hey, nobody's perfect. In reality, this is actually all good news as he joins the fight against Amon, the Dark God. Somehow. Spoiler alert, his head gets a little bit more air circulation if you know what I mean. Tychus has arrived with all new sets of units, if you can call them that, the Heaven's Devils, a band of elite yet very dangerous team of trained killers that make this commander very unique. Now on to the general mechanics of the hero that makes him very unique and different from everyone else almost entirely. Starting out the game, normally you have your SCVs, a base, your deposits, resources, Wait, what's that? This here, my friends, is Joey Ray's Bar, an essential building that is no better place to recruit legendary outlaws for a very steep price that just do a little bit too much damage. You can recruit up to five maximum outlaws, including Tychus, as he is always present for reasons I can't really explain. Each outlaw costs an insane amount and is limited to a cooldown before you can even summon one to the battlefield. Each outlaw is drawn to the battle for different reasons, as each one has a role to play and come with their own upgrades and individual categories. There are three upgrades for each individual outlaw and one ultimate upgrade that can only be acquired once all three previous upgrades have been acquired. These upgrades make the outlaw more powerful than you can ever comprehend. Each outlaw will have their own ability that supports their role on the team. As you level up your commander, so does the variety of outlaws and upgrades you have at your disposal. Now, leading into the heroes and units, the commander has his arsenal and each outlaw is classed into three different sections with a general role and a more specific role based on their upgrades and their overall equipment. The guns or gunslingers are damage dealers that will be doing most of the damage while upgrades enhance their abilities and basic attacks in order to do higher DPS. The muscle used for tanking damage with very large health bars in order to protect the largely fragile heroes that serve a very big purpose on the team, high survivability and exterminators in their own respective roles. And the final category are fixers, specialists capable of dealing large numbers of damage only through abilities as their basic attacks are not reliable whatsoever. High utility that can support the team and your allies while reducing the number of enemies capable of fighting. Dare I say it? This is the first commander where I use hotkeys on all of the abilities. Now I need to make a clear transition in the video before we go on to the next section of the video, which is that for this specific video, I will be changing the order of how things are done. This is because in order to truly understand the impact of the abilities, you need to understand what outlaws are available and what roles they are so that when you build a team and when you activate these upgrades, you know exactly what you're doing, which is the whole point of the video, but let's move on to the units. Starting out with guns is Tychus Finley himself, the most versatile of all the outlaws and the most consistent damage I've ever seen. That would explain his minigun. Designed for taking out large groups of enemies with very high fire rate while still dealing enough damage per shot to take down larger enemies. The Shredder Grenade, Tychus' unique ability, which deals good damage in a very large area and can be tossed so far, he could be mistaken for a football quarterback. Mainly use this ability for taking out bunched up enemies and to quickly dispatch attack waves or to deal with light units. It's best not to use the Shredder Grenade for large targets as it doesn't deal enough damage to even make a noticeable difference and you're better off saving that grenade for somewhere useful. 
KD-9A implosive cores, shredder grenades, now pull targets towards the detonation area, best to combine with area effect abilities that belong to other heroes. Venom Shell, a flat out damage upgrade for the grenade, increasing the damage from 75 damage to 125, making it an excellent burst of damage. The Kelmorian Ripper rounds decrease the armor of targets by 5 for 2 seconds when Tychus fires the minigun, dealing more damage for every new target. Now much like all ultimate abilities, they are very unique, and Tychus is one such, as it requires 18. SureShot Network Helmet increases the base damage of his attacks by 20% for each nearby outlaw. It pays to go together, not alone. But on the topic of dealing with much larger enemies, you have Crooked Sam. Now Crooked Sam is the Reaper of the group and still holds the values of a true Reaper which means extremely high bursts of damage with not being able to take any sort of damage despite the fact that he's a hero unit. Now this guy is best used for eliminating high value targets. Demolition charges are capable of dealing high amounts of damage to a single target. The ability detonates after 5 seconds once targeted an enemy and can store up to 3 charges. What makes this hero absolutely broken is the first upgrade, the Last Corp G7 charges. Now this upgrade increases the base damage of that ability by 100%. So that 100 damage ability is now doing a thousand. To give you an idea how much damage that is, that is the same amount of damage as a nuke in the game. He also includes some defensive upgrades with the Mobius Restraint Matrix, which when the charge is planted on an enemy, it disables their ability to detect and use any sort of abilities. Whenever Crooked Sam takes any damage, his movement speed is drastically increased by 80% and he takes no damage for 5 seconds. However, this effect, even though it's powerful, can only be casted every 15 seconds. The Demolition Charge's biggest problem is the cooldown, as when you use all charges, you're gonna need to wait a long time before all three are back. Enhanced Hostilities Kit reduces the charge up time of Demolition Charge by 3 seconds every time Crooked Sam attacks, making Crooked Sam's basic attack actually worth something. Last of the Gunslingers, and with the focus of anti-air, is Cyrus. Now Cyrus's main cannon, by all means, is decent, however the fire rate is deplorable. With an ability to deploy turrets at decent range from himself that can attack both air and ground troops makes up for a slow rate of fire and has detection capabilities. With up to 5 charges and times out after 60 seconds and most of all contains all of the upgrades that applies to Cyrus himself, which is the main reason why he is so overpowered. With upgrades of every basic attack having a small chance of striking fear into the enemies making them scatter to the winds and other very niche abilities like the D99 detonator which basically every time a turret dies or Cyrus dies it creates an explosion, however because it's a death ability I would very very much not recommend it right away. His strongest ability is the SA-55 Thunderbolt Missiles. Now these missiles can strike two targets at once, dealing 100 damage to both targets. Now stack them on with all of the turrets plus Sired himself, creating a kill zone for any air units within range. Cyrus's ultimate ability still keeps in line with the co-op spirit of Absolutely Broken, however it isn't as exciting as his only ultimate ability once you achieve all three other upgrades is that his turrets get 75% more damage and health. Which is good, don't get me wrong, just not exactly exciting. Now with the main damage dealers out of the way, we now move on to the muscle, the beefcakes of the squads. They're gonna be used mainly for tanking and exterminating in their field. Just keep in mind that they are only strong with the offense in their field, everywhere else they suffer. And it is more apparent in this one than in any other tank, which is Blaze. The Outlaw Firebat dealing fire damage to incinerate all that is in front of them and burning them and roasting them inside of their own carcasses. I know, this is the actual information on them. Designed to deal damage to large amounts of light enemies and bunched up threats like attack waves and infested maps. As you'd probably imagine, fire works really well in an outbreak. However, beyond that, he is a muscle unit, which means tanking is something that he universally shares across the entire class, which means he's able to take lots of damage and even more so with his upgrades. Blaze's ability is to throw a barrel of oil, dousing enemies and the ground with oil that can be set on fire and at the beginning slow not only the attack speed 
but slow the movement speed by 75%, which allows him to fire off his attacks before they even come into contact. Dousing enemies with oil also prevents them from being cloaked again and will deal bonus damage to light units or really anything that is on fire from his basic attack. With upgrades like high capacity containers, which increases the oil spill radius by 100%. Now this isn't strong as it is right there, but when you add on the next two upgrades, he makes them absolutely devastating. Like Hades oil, harvested from hell itself that increases the flame damage done to enemies covered in oil by a lot. Wild Flame Fuel Additives is hands down his best ability. Now take into fact that you now have high capacity containers, so the increased radius, and Hades oil, now you're doing more damage to enemies. Enemies that are doused in oil when this upgrade is purchased will slowly burn to death. Once they die from the fire, ultimately, they will explode on death. Now this not only does damage, but this effect also carries to any enemy nearby causing a chain reaction. So quite literally, one basic attack can completely annihilate a base or an entire enemy force. Now with all these upgrades in mind, as you can probably imagine, Blaze is absolutely phenomenal when dealing with large amounts of small units. And when it comes down to Blaze's ultimate ability, surprisingly, it actually doesn't rank high on any sort of priority list for upgrades. With an improved combat suit and being able to take 30 less damage on every attack basically makes him immune to small arms fire. It's good for making him really tank a lot of those heavy hitters like Ultralisks, Hybrids, making the enemies need to work a lot harder. If Leroy Jenkins was a StarCraft character, this would be him. Quite literally jumping into combat is Cannonball, the most survivable muscles available with heaps of health and high bursts of damage. Now despite these high damage numbers, he is best utilized for his tanking ability to allow people like Crooked Sam and Cyrus to really be effective in combat. Heavy Impact is his ability, which pulls Cannonball towards a marked position and deals a very small amount of damage. It's best used for moving around and pushing him forward into the middle of the fight and do his job of tanking. Upon impact, you can stun enemies and give him room to get his high bursts of damage in. Upgrades like his impact boost increase the, not only the radius, but the stun duration of his heavy impact by 100%, practically disabling troops for quite a long time as soon as he lands on them. While upgrades like critical response system can be attributed to his tanking ability, as upon taking fatal damage, he not only becomes immune to damage for 5 seconds, but heals all of his health. However, due to the power of this ability, this effect can only occur every 60 seconds. His high burst of damage comes from his last upgrade and his ultimate upgrade being Redline Power Cells. Cannonball's attack speed and attack damage increases by 3% every time he gets a basic attack in. This can stack up to a maximum of 60 and combined with his ultimate ability, Malice Munition, where there is a 30% chance that he will do 4 times the damage. But again, best use him for his tanking ability and not relying on that damage output. And now we move on to the Armor Cracker, with a more focus on damage than actually tanking. Rattlesnake, a Marauder by trade, which means no armor unit, objective, or boss is safe from his grenades. A balance between tanking damage with his dependence on health regeneration and damage numbers that can kill quite easily. Rattlesnake's ability is the Revitalizer, a killable field that does a very small percentage of healing in a very large area and best used in the middle of fights to keep outlaws fighting. Most of Rattlesnake's upgrades are going to be found in this category as not only is he capable of increasing the healing rate of it by 100%, but he's also to increase any unit inside the area's attack speed by 15%. And after that, the self-sustain gets even stronger with his stim packs, healing 2% of his health constantly when activated, and his movement and attack speed bonus for 15 seconds. This ability, thankfully, is auto-casted, which means it's automatic. And when it comes to the topic of his ultimate ability, it falls into the category of Blaze. It's not exactly mandatory or high priority, but it is a nice upgrade. Hammer Munitions. Rattlesnake's ultimate ability, which makes his attacks do splash damage instead of di only direct attack. And now we move on to the final section of the units, which is the Fixers. Specialists in their own field that might not have an amazing basic attack, but these guys get their abilities and utility to become very powerful when a part of the team, and oh boy are they essential. Now first up is the Fixers. As a Fixer, I'm ashamed that I did not use a lot more often, as much like a lot of this series, I find out new units, and I regret not using them. Vega is one of these fixers and one that I haven't used and oh boy that I miss out on a lot. Now Vega quenches your thirst for more units beyond the basic SCVs for building and harvesting. Vega dominates the battlefield quite literally controlling units and confusing enemies to disrupt attack waves and build an actual army. Her ability, Dominate, 
holding a max of three charge, turning them to your side for four minutes. Dominated units self-destruct after the duration is up, and the only units that cannot be dominated is hybrids and bosses. Every other unit is fair game. When you dominate a unit with Vega, it not only heals itself completely, but increases its attack speed by 75% for its first few seconds of being dominated. This of course is enhanced by Neural Disruption, which allows any other unit right next to the dominated unit to become temporarily confused, really capitalizing on that chaos and that fire rate. Side Projector is used for the utility and best for a team, where five enemies are made temporarily ground units, which allows outlaws like Rattlesnake and Blaze to really light them up, figuratively and quite literally. A good trade-off if you're not rolling Cyrus for his anti-air capabilities. Vega's ultimate ability is honestly broken, it shouldn't be allowed in the game, but hey, I ain't complaining. Her ultimate ability, the Type 88 Persuader, vastly increases the duration of dominate ability by 200% making units survive almost the entire game if you take care of them, which is quite insane since there is no limit to how much dominated units you can have besides population. The second fixer is Nux, a Spectre, which is basically a much better version of a Ghost that in my opinion has a lot more application than Vega, not only through abilities, but by team landscape. Nux dominates the battlefield by creating kill zones that tear apart any enemies inside these fields, having a knack for killing bunched up enemies and wear down fortifications. Nux's ability is Ultrasonic Pulse. It's gonna be his bread and butter for most of the game as the literal reason for his being. Energy inside this small area can later be upgraded to deal 20% damage per second at a duration of 6 seconds best combined with Tychus' Shredder Grenade to keep enemies inside the area while it demolishes attack waves. Upgrades are very one-sided for Nux as every single one of his upgrades enhances his abilities except the final one. T4 Cloudburst Shells increase the damage of the Pulse by 50%, Ultrasonic Boosters increase the radius of the Ultrasonic Pulse by 50%, and Crystalline Amplifiers increase the duration by 100%. Again, this is his bread and butter. Keeping with the team dynamic, Nux works best in a group and not by himself. His ultimate upgrade, the N3 Networking, reduces the cooldown of abilities to nearby outlaws. Just remember that teamwork makes the dream work. The last of the fixers, and my favorite by far, might not have a lot of attack, as a matter of fact she has absolutely no attacking power, but extreme support side. Lieutenant Nikara is an outlaw medic. As you can imagine, her role on the team is to protect them and keep them at full health. Especially easy since her base healing power heals 30 HP per second and the upgrades are just ridiculous both in power and in price. Her ability is the Reinvigorating Burst, which heals 200 health and grants them 25% more base damage and ability damage for a temporary amount of time best used when everyone needs a bit of healing or just needs a bit of a buff before getting into a one-sided fight. Upgrades, as you would probably imagine, is mainly associated around her healing, whether it be from her Emojin Repair Nanites, which increase the healing power of her ability by 100%, making it a lot more viable as a healing use rather than a buff. The Procyon Serum increases the base healing rate of Nikara's beam by 100%, which means that 30% HP healing rate is now turned to 60 health, especially with the Twin Heal Beam Gauntlet, which as you would imagine, Imagined by the name, now heals two targets instead of just one. Now the Matrix Generator is Lieutenant Nakara's ultimate ability, or gear, so to say. Now I feel that this upgrade is honestly underrated as it provides a large amount of value for your team and is honestly an unsung hero. The ability surrounds a friendly target with a shield that can absorb 400 damage for 20 seconds. It activates as soon as the target starts the initial healing, which means they're going to be protected as soon as they start recovering health. At the end of the day, Lieutenant Nakara is a great choice for your team, however, you need to be sure that the other four outlaws that you have chosen, well, realistically, three outlaws that you have chosen, is able to make up for the damage as she has a zero damage policy. Quite literally, it's impossible to deal damage with her. Keep in mind that out of the four outlaws that you are able to choose cannot be changed, even when they die and can be respawned for 250 minerals, so losing them is not a good idea in general because it is a lot to pay for. And once an outlaw is chosen, there is no going back on that decision. Now, before I go into the abilities, there are two more things I have to say about all of the outlaws in general. One is that there are static upgrades for each category that makes them better in every way. Gunslingers have an upgrade that increased their attack speed by 25%. Muscles get an upgrade that increased their HP by 25% and fixers get detection abilities. Lastly is that for any new StarCraft or co-op player just in general for this commander, if you want a good composition of army, make sure you have Tychus for large amounts of enemies, 
Rattlesnake for armor targets and bosses, and Cyrus to disperse large groups with fear and have a solid anti-air. We can also combine it with Crooked Sam to do extremely high burst damage. However, the last slot is up to you. And now we finally move on to the abilities. Can't believe the video has gone this long with all the outlaws. Damn, there's so much information to cover. First is the Medivac pickup. In my opinion, Tychus' strongest ability. Costing 200 minerals and 200 gas to place at a maximum of three as you only start out with one. The Medivac pickup is Tychus' form of movement around the map, instantly transporting any outlaw inside of the area to another area of your choice as long as there is vision. As the name entails, it is a medical evacuation ship. So it heals the outlaws that are picked up and upon deployment gain cloaking for 10 seconds as they are able to secure the landing site. I'd recommend not to build the turrets to defend your base, instead just use the medevac to move your outlaws back to base, face the attack wave, and then put them right back into the fight with your allies rather than separating your costs into defenses. Another good use for them is to bring revive outlaws back from the fight as Joy Ray's bar will always be far away from the front lines. And then there's the Odin. As you can see, it is basically a Thor that is very much on steroids, vastly bigger in size and in firepower payload. Basic attacks are heavy hitting and do splash damage while its anti-air missiles fry anything within range. Those giant cannons on his back are not just for the aesthetics, as they are used in its basic ability to bombard a position where enemies basically cannot survive. However, keep in mind that there is a delay in the ability use, so always aim to where the enemies are going to be rather than where they are. At the engineering bay where you can do all the try outlaw research upgrades, and you can eventually purchase big red button upgrade. Once you hit level 15, you turn your barrage ability into a nuke that deals 1000 damage to a very large area, wiping out almost anything in your way. The downside to this ability, of course, is that the big red button is a single use ability only. Tychus is piloting the Odin, which means he won't be on the battlefield anymore as long as the Odin is active. Oh, and don't even get me started on the cooldown of this guy, because his massive firepower and his massive ability to tank is only equalized by Tychus not being on the battlefield, which means any role that he is serving in your team is now taken away temporarily, and the cooldown for this guy is absolutely insane. Leveling up past level 15 and you will Enter the Ascended Plane of the Mastery Rank. For 90 levels of shared among all of your commanders, every level rewards a point that can be used to slowly yet drastically increase the power of your commanders in almost every single way. When it comes to Power Set 1, it's all about personal preference on how you like to play. Reducing the cooldown of Tychus' Shredder Grenade to a maximum of 30%. The more popular of the two, then makes you able to spam the ability a lot more often being able to deal higher bursts of damage. I personally go for the increased attack speed of 30% as I use Tychus as a versatile outlaw to compensate every shortcoming of my team. However, the Shredder Grenade is always going to be an amazing choice. As it goes for Power Set 2, most of the time I talk about how powerful each mastery perk is, but this one's a little different as it does bring powerful changes, but it doesn't feel as powerful as it should be. Try Outlaw Improvement increases each category stats by 15% a very powerful, but limited in use. The other is to have outlaws have a lower cooldown, which is hard to afford them in the beginning, but allows you to play more aggressive a lot earlier if you have the minerals and gas to spare. Now, Power Set 3 is a difference between high mobility or high pushing and tanking power. Having a reduced cooldown on the medevac, a cooldown to a maximum of 45 seconds of reduction, makes the reactions to threats around the map a lot easier to react to and grants faster deployment around the field. On the other hand, having a reduced cooldown of the Odin by 120 seconds makes him a lot more useful and a lot more present on the battlefield. But again, the Odin's problems is that the nuke is only one use and has a very limited limited time in the battle, which is made up by this mastery perk. Overall, this one comes down to personal preference on which one you like more. Now technically you can have both of these, however that takes an extreme amount of dedication and an attention span that I honestly do not have, which is the prestige perks. A choice that you can take only when a commander has level 15, resetting their level but getting an entire new way to play. Now technical recruiter is all about the abilities of the outlaws more than the number of outlaws you have. A real definition of quality over quantity if I do say so myself. Active abilities that the outlaws have are now reduced by 35% in cooldown speed. The only downside to this overall thing is that the cost of outlaws and the time before they are even available to recruit is now increased by 50. A very steep price, if I do say so myself. Lone Wolf. 
As the name implies, the farther away each outlaw is from each other, the better they are. Gain stat bonuses of 30% for each outlaw and an overall 50% less damage, making any hero more powerful the farther away they are from, in, from each other, which introduces the idea of multiple attacks. However, as you would suspect, separating each hero from each other takes away both their role in the team and the advantages and disadvantages that they have, making every engagement just a little bit more interesting. And the last one, a very interesting one, the Ditful Dogwalker, a procedure that focuses on the Odin and does not require Tychus to pilot it and the duration on the battlefield is drastically increased by 100%. Meanwhile, the cooldown of it is reduced by 40%. Massive improvements. However, <laughs> there's always a downside to this stuff, I swear. The downside to all this is that the barrage ability and eventually the big red button is completely removed. Shit. One final note is that at the end of the day, your success is dependent on the economy of spending in order to get the gear in the upgrades and the outlaws themselves and your team composition of what your team is comprised of out of every single outlaw that you have available to you. And that is Tychus's kit. I hope you all found this video informative and I hope you all are able to use this information and absolutely dominate the battlefield at a very expensive price. If you love the video, if you love the series, hell, if you love me, be sure to scroll down below and hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of the content coming your way. We have a few more commanders to go, and we're almost done. With all this being said, this is Toxic Spill. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you all in the next one. Remember, do stuff you love. Signing off.